by the Dutch and the English government, you know, um, they kind of came together and created this oil company and they had this branch in Nigeria um, in 1957. And what they would do, they started off illegally collecting oil. Hi guys and welcome again to another video um, where I highlight Nigerian history. Today we'll be talking about the incredible man who was the 10th of October 1941 and he was named Kenule Bisin Saro Wewa. His family was a part of the tribe of the Ogoni people and by the time of his birth, his father had waited so many years to be born. So he was definitely a celebrated son, you know, someone that um, they had waited many years to give birth to. Um, but the way that even when he was born, he was um, pronounced dead at least five times, you know, as a baby, but he kept, you know, fighting. Um, he had a heart condition even growing up, you know, as a child, but he continued to, you know, push through it. And a lot of his childhood education, you know, started off with the traditional way. And then, of course, with the colonial influence, um, formal education started to seep through. Um, and despite the art condition he was born with, you know, he was able to, you know, excel in sports, in his academics. He was such an excellent student, very intelligent boy as he grew up, you know, he was um, captain of sports teams and um, and was winning awards. So in 1962, he actually won a scholarship to um, study in the, at the University of Ibadan, which is actually the first um, university in Nigeria. And of course, he continued on with this excellence and continued to win awards um, in writing, in literature, even in school. So during school, he was part of the cricket team, the drama club, and also writing group, and um, he, he pretty much could do it all. He was very much a minority in a lot of the places he went to, you know, for example, in the University of Ibadan, obviously, uh, like, this was a majority of Yoruba people. Like, he, he found himself being the only Ogoni person in a lot of these spaces, you know, so he was, but he was very much a nationalist which in my own terms is pretty much someone who um, want to do, wants to do well for the nation, who is all about bringing people together no matter what um, ethnic di differences they have. So he was very much um, all about that, even when he was, uh, even as a teenager, you know, uh, it's not all about division. And yes, of course we're different. Yes, of course we speak different languages and believe different things, but there's power in coming together. You know? So one weekend was going to bring people together was through education. And he was, you know, teaching at the University of Nigeria in Enugu State um, in Sunka. But, um, you know, shortly after he started teaching, um, obviously the Nigerian Civil War broke out. Ken being someone who was like, one Nigeria, one Nigeria was a bit, you know, tricky for him to stay. So he went back to his hometown. There was a military coup and there was a whole like wipeout of a lot of the leaders that were going on with this United Nigeria. And oh, I don't really want to go into it because it's about Ken of Saro's um, life and this video is just going to be too long. <laughs> um, he basically believed in one Nigeria, like I said, in a united Nigeria. And he felt like the divide of like the south and the north and in nigeria would just cause more trouble that was his that was his personal opinion so um i guess the the military coup and the old wipeout of the majority of the leaders was a all shock to him and he did he didn't really think this was a great idea you know um to divide nigeria basically but the nigerian civil war was not a joke obviously there's no civil war that's a joke but you know it, it's definitely something that um i'm gonna put a link of i'm gonna put a link to a video that i think if you're not familiar with the story um would just would be great for you to watch um but yeah i don't want to really dwell on it too much because there's so many layers to it and of course still so many uh, not enough acknowledgement of what happened and people died um children women men it, like a lot of people were where 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 a lot of families were wiped out due to this horrific you know tantrum yeah so ken was slowly building his career as a writer around this time as well um he was a businessman you know he was um writing plays and he wore a lot of hats you know as well as being a father and a husband and a son. He held different posts at the same time. Simultaneously, is this simultaneously? 
um, he was mentioned for the Ministry of Education. He had his own businesses, transport businesses. He was a writer. He was writing plays. He had his own television show as well. So there was a whole lot of things happening as well as the country literally being shaken up. So in 1990, he formed the um, MOSOP, which was the Movement of the Survival of the Ogoni People. Um, and this was a an organization that was so passionate about protecting the rights and the interest of the indigenous people in Ogoni land and one of the right one of the awful rights that the government and the leaders were violating Nigeria is a very hot spot for oil natural resources right and from time there was a company called Shell there is a company called Shell um, it's a Dutch and English oil company that has a base actually in Nigeria, very very well known. Um, and they were all they at the time they were they were taking a lot of resources from Ogoni land from River State, you know, especially that was a, a space where a lot of resources for oil was like reserves, and they didn't care what they were doing to the land and to the people, literally poisoning people like literally messing up the entire environment and a lot of the people could not really defend themselves so anyway ken started this movement and you know basically to plead with these awful people to stop so the Oguni people wrote reached out to shell and to the government and literally pleaded to for you know for this to stop and of course they were met back with a lot of gaslighting and shell denied the claims and months later another spill happened shell literally went to like um clean this up they were, they were more concerned about getting their oil back and i say they're very loosely because it's not theirs right <sighs> And, and and then they threw around some figures of like compensation or whatever but it would never nothing really came to fruition there was a lot of gaslighting for the good people even the nigerian government basically just like turned a blind eye because as i'm saying this it doesn't even um compare to the amount of lives lost the amount of land damage over decades and up until 2000 year 2000 there was just still a lot of gaslighting and a lot of evil basically that's that's all i can say so i really implore you to read some of the source if you really want to know and i think you should know there are a lot of books on this but there's one book that i really enjoyed and i think really encompasses um the tra tragedy basically the tra it, it, it's it's a genocide and um it's it's just uh, i don't know any other word um other word without cursing right so of all this started to go down with the oil spinach spinach when all this started to go down, he was very, he, he pretty much was forced to leave the creative work he was doing and all the television work. He wrote appeals and, uh, and a bill of rights, especially talking about the way that um, the Ogoni people were kind of um, marginalized in Nigeria, um, not just by the effects of colonization, but also by the Nigerian government. And, the, you know, there was a lot of changes around that time, to be honest, you know, with the um, civil war like it was I mean I, I can't even imagine the PTSD that a lot of these people that grew up uh, lived through these times you know some of them are 70 right now I guess you know and and, and it's just amazing the I, I mean I say amazing not in a positive way but like just what's another word English English is so limited sometimes you know but um it, it's yeah it's sad it's truly heartbreaking and in 1993, something terrible happened to Nigeria and um, in the name of Sonia Bacha to Nigeria. And um, he, he took over power. And fun fact, when Abacha died, <laughs> I remember I was about, um, I always do that. I'll say fun fact, but it's not a fun fact. But anyway, when I was about, I mean, one of my earliest memories of life literally was um, when Abacha died and everybody was like um, out in the streets and singing Abacha don't die eh Abacha don't die eh Abacha like and there was this boy <laughs> he fell in the gutter he was dancing and he fell in the gutter and he kept dancing inside the gutter and I just I remember thinking somebody's dead and they're dancing okay but it, it like the, the joy was so contagious it was actually in Lagos I remember um, you know, Paja, it's I don't know that just that just gave me like a burst of 
serotonin i don't know but um yeah i just remember that and it was a really nice memory um and i'm sure his death brought a lot of people relief and joy um but yeah funny enough you know like i'd be going on the googles and i i really do see a lot of uh, people um not a lot but some people actually really do did enjoy him and, and thought he did good things i don't know if if you know anything about his reign or about this terrible man personal opinion and of that um let me know that yeah whatever it is i'm missing i, I don't think i'm going to look i was a waste of browsing space right um but it was um yeah it's a character you know just really tough and oral and early on in this fight to kind of get um attention when he wrote to the nigerian government to help um Sarah obviously did not get a lot of great feedback or anything so he traveled abroad and you know went to America and kind of started to talk to the NGOs and you know to the United Nations and accounts of when he would appeal to um, NGOs international NGOs like Amnesty International and they were like you know um, is anyone dying you know um, we don't help in Africa you know so nobody's dying like you know then it's really none of our business kind of thing and you know um, and, and he was like basically saying that it's not that people are literally dying but eventually people will die because pollution is in the air corruption um children are having to live in this and what they essentially did to the Ogoni land was you know this was a land that was flourishing and was so beautiful was so beautiful and had so many natural resources and what they did and with the nigerian government keeping quiet with what show did was continue to build these flames and of course they didn't at the time they didn't go and shoot people directly but as the flames were going up as the smoke and the oil spillage was spillage was going on um people were people were living in poverty you know due to lack of jobs and lack of like um taking care of them so if, anyway due to the environmental um hazard basically they they, they were having health problems you know of course their breathing was bad you know just shell at this time we're literally pretending like nothing was happening and you know of course they really the, the, the government at this time were pushing for no matter what we can't like this oil thing can't go into business because i can imagine that they are definitely getting um, profits for using this um, Ogoni land, using the Ogoni land as as a, as a dump, as a as a space to just collect things and dry things up. <sighs> January 1993, um, Ken Sarawa led this beautiful, peaceful protest. You know, um, about 30,000 people who were there protesting um, that this oil company would just stop terrorizing people as they've been doing for so many years and so many decades um and this definitely got so much attention um from the government because it they realized that whoa i guess this movement is starting to really get a lot of supporters you know it's not just a small land that we can just ignore and keep taking from you know it was definitely something that was sig something significant was definitely happening this protest was a definite success because it meant it meant that um, a lot of the oil companies were not like oh i guess we're gonna um we're not gonna go there for now shell as well they they kind of just suspended their operations for a little bit and but of course ken was not left to just go you know he was like assaulted he was obviously taken into custody abused um you know really like they made his life hell basically you know at this time because it was it was definitely one of the leaders that was you know he showed his face he was very vocal about these um atro atro uh, these awful things that were going on in Ogoni so it was a definite target for um brutality time um it was just an awful waste of space really um and, and i don't want to give him any other time but um he literally went he, he literally made it his personal goal to go into this space with military force and to make sure that you know show that suspended a minute ago they're coming back you know and they're going to come back and continue to destroy things um and this was the beginning of the end basically <sighs> 
of course as a result of any movement really there'll be some people no matter how wrong or no matter how right you think you are there'll be people who definitely do not believe in what in the cause in the fight that you're fighting against um even if it's for their benefit anyway these there, there was some other people who did not believe in the um in, in this movement four of their chiefs were brutally killed and as a result of this um the government blamed the MOSOP this murders on um Kensaro's organization because they found a great opportunity to kind of um make them look bad and make and discredit all the good work that they're doing so anyway um as looking for a way to stop them and get shell and all the other oil, the oil companies back in business to continue destroying the lives of other people um so what they did was it, they, they arrested ken and eight other people who were part of his organization and basically basically locked them up for over a year and this was like um, the beginning of a terrible time for the Ogoni Nine, as they are known. Um, the Ogoni Nine were Ken Saro Wiwa, Satode Dobi, Nordu Iowa, Daniel Boko, Paul Levara, Felix Nuate, Barry Bobera, Barry Nem Kiobel, and John Kipuni. Pretty, pretty sure I've messed up a lot of the pronunciations of that name, but I really think it's important for me to say their names. Literally gave their lives, you know? Obviously, not like they, they wanted to die, but in this fight for people, it led to them being... <sighs> Let me just continue the story. So, so at, at the time that this, the Ogini Nine were being detained and locked up, for like over a year mind you you see the situation in ogoni the town was just terrible because the military were so that they were oppressing people they killed people they raped women they raped girls as well they uh, um just they they were just it was awful you know um it it was terrible and I, I can sit here and you know try to like dissect and put words and put all these fancy words or whatever but what they did was evil and they killed people for no reason no good reason actually for a reason for greediness for selfishness for wickedness um just, oh, and the trial that they did, that the Ogoni Nine had to endure and Kentaro had to endure was literally just so wicked because they, they bribed witnesses. They didn't even let them, you know, speak up. And I, I'll put a, another link of, you know, the trial broken down. And, you know, of course, we can do all this reading, we can do all this talking, but it would never compare to what these men had to go through, what the children, the innocent children had to go through due to the, the the fact that people are just people can just be wicked you know and there's still no real justice to be honest there's still no real consequences and acknowledgement for this genocide for this awful war against innocent civilians minding their business and then you come in and kill promise kill 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 intelligence do you understand like it's so stupid it's so stupid it's so stupid it's so dumb you know um and sadly um they, they were executed and I, I you know i i didn't to be honest i really wanted to create this story in a way that i can just you know be concise and be like hey let's celebrate him what as we're celebrating him we need to acknowledge that you know nigerian government failed him you know show company basically killed this man for what for god's sake for what for what ah I don't know if I, and someone someone's dad had to die you know someone's husband had to die um like these are real people you know i think sometimes i'm just like oh. yeah okay i'm gonna have to kind of stop this tangent on the show of this tag like i'm gonna have to stop this engine because i really wouldn't want the videos to be too long um and take away from the amazing person that um these people are but um it's i would really just implore you to please read about this if you don't know about it and um uh, and if you do let's you know keep sharing the stories and talking about them and you know um 
yeah just really keeping these names alive really um because it's really important and really helped me with the pronunciation as well please <laughs> um but um yeah so it was as well as being such an activist a writer an amazing man a, a kind and generous and um someone who was um against his tribalistic um racism boy boy you know everything and um, he was very um just yes yeah, as and as always with a lot of these amazing um people i don't claim to know everything i don't claim to know all about their lives and who they were in their private lives or anything but it's just the work that they've done who they are the life that they've lived is definitely worth taking a look at and i'm um, studying and being inspired by and ken saro we were kenule kenule saro we were was definitely a human that we all um we all could be a little more like so thank you so much for watching um i'm grateful for his legacy and i am so glad you're here with me i'm so glad you're alive and you exist and that yeah i hope everyone is well and taking care of themselves because it's it's very important um yeah <laughs> this was a weird episode wasn't it um, but yeah, thank you. I was a, if I was a newscaster here, eh, I would just get fired. It's literally bad, bad. I, I'll be like, ah, the, the weather is um. Let, let's say I'm a weather person. Let's say I'm a weather person. I'll be like, ah, the weather is. It's going to be raining tomorrow. Let me tell you why it's not raining yesterday. And tell me, like that's that's gonna be me. And you're gonna be like, is it raining or not? When when like 